Hello, I'm Gabrielle and welcome back to Cloth Edit. This episode is all about blouse inspiration, all because of So April Blouse 23. And we're coming up to the final full week, so it's getting very exciting. I cannot believe the number of beautiful blouses that are already coming in. Usually the last week's really, really busy. Um, but there are already, um, I don't know, over 280, well over 280 posts. It might even be 300 posts. Um, so of those single entries, probably 275 or so. Anyway, hopefully I have been worked out how to do this and I'm scrolling through the hashtag as we speak and hopefully that will inspire you to go and follow that hashtag because honestly I'm getting I'm writing notes of um, pattern brands that I didn't know of and patterns that I didn't know of and yes I've got quite a few that I want to make but I love blouses with yokes and I've just spent some time going through the um, the blouses of the indie pattern brands who are sponsoring the challenge they're all all brands that I stock at Cloth Edit and just picking out some of my favorite yoke patterns and I've also been rummaging around my bigger pattern stash and I've pulled out some big four patterns um, that all have lovely yokes as well and I've got a lovely vintage pattern well by vintage it's 1980s Vogue and um, I love this pattern. I've made it up so I want to share that one as well. Right, I thought I'd start with what I am wearing and I hopefully I can put in some photos here for you. Um, but I am wearing the Avid Seamstress blouse pattern and I made this last year for the first time for So April Blouse. And I did a bit of a hack. I mean, it's a classic, lovely blouse, but I had this vintage pattern. I've always got it, I've got it safely away in this um, plastic um, container envelope. So it's a woman's weekly blouse. How amazing is that? And as you can see, the base pattern view A is, is very similar to the Avid Seamstress blouse. Um, chalk and cheese as far as instructions, I should say. But I loved view B and that ruffle piece that was down the front. So yes, so I decided to do it with my version. I've come untied. I just had it had it tied up with this skirt I'm wearing. Um, and I love it and I love it especially because this fabric is um, it's out of stock it's a plain black Japanese cotton jacquard and so it has those little transparent moments and I thought that lovely ruffle would give me two layers for most of the front piece so that worked a treat um, highly recommend that as a uh, for any beginners out there and um, if you're stepping into shirt making, um, this would be a great place to start because you don't have to wrangle with cuffs and a collar. It's got a collar stand and just elastic cuffs. Um, so yes, I think I lengthened my sleeves and that was about it um, and adding that ruffle as well. So I've got my bundle of indie patterns here that have a, a yoke. There are, there are others that I just that I just thought I'd grab a selection for you. So the first one is from Atelier Jupe and it's the Emma pattern. Now for those who love the Marnie, then Emma, which was released before the Marnie, it was released last, well, yeah, last year, um, but before the Marnie, um, it's lovely, but there are points of difference. So the um, this has a neat sleeve insertion and there are gathers into a cuff. And the yoke piece is also pleated, just like the Marnie. Um, it doesn't have instructions for that. 
um, undulating you know design with the pleats but what I like about it is the yoke is deeper and I think that would actually be a bit more flattering on me than the Marnie where that yoke and gathering hits so and yeah and it's got the um, little ruffle collar option as well which I love fastens at the back lovely uh, the next one is Atelier, um, Atelier Scamet, the Artisan. Now, I know Petit Shows is, has been very popular, um, but the Artisan, I think, is a little bit overlooked. I love this, and if I was to put the two against each other, I think I'd go for the Artisan for me. I love it because it's got the interesting back detail like the pretty shows or the option for that little peekaboo opening at the back which I just really love and there are little gatherings at the front but I love the shape of the yoke with the artisan a slight V and the gentle gathers into that yoke it's got a little cuff um, and there's also a dress, ver a dress version so yes I love the artisan now the next one I've mentioned before when I talked about my restock of folkwear patterns but it's a classic and I think deserves a little bit of a showcase um, so if I haven't mentioned all of these indie pattern brands are sponsors for the so April blouse challenge and they've been very very generous um, why I love this again it's the gentle shape of the front yoke um, and the option for that um, lace insertion or at least lace placement if you don't cut away the fabric underneath. I also love the fact that there's um, an option for a ruffle around the yoke. Um, it's just such a pretty blouse and um, yes, love it. Next up, and there have been a few of these again this year. Um, being posted with the so April blouse 23 hashtag the fiber not fiber the Friday pattern company sagebrush blouse I love this I, I I haven't made it for myself I've made it for my daughter um, I do want to make it but I would probably lengthen the sleeves lengthen the frill um, what else and I'd probably do a contrasting frill and bias around the neck but I love I love looking at the sagebrush entries that come in it's still always just such um, a beautiful blouse um, now I've seen a couple of these in the challenge uh, it's the fiber mood um, ermine now I've got a couple well this is my last Fiber Mood Ermine. Fiber Mood, as a Fiber Mood stockist of the magazine, um, I have an opportunity to um, stock some special paper, uh, paper patterns that they get printed every now and then. It's very rare. Anyway, so that's why I've got the paper version. And again, I love the shape of this yoke, really quite um, angled front yoke and then there's a separate button placket which I love as well all of those separate pieces just give more opportunities for contrasting fabrics and things also has a beautiful back yoke also gathers into I'll show you the line drawings well yeah just a lovely pattern and yes I've seen at least one I'm thinking of one in particular who's already entered the challenge now I haven't seen any of these, maybe there's one that's entered, hmm, the named pattern um, Silly or Sealy, dress and blouse version. Um, this is fantastic, there are a number of features I love, I love the option of the, well is it an option, yes an option for the pleats on the sleeves, very similar to the Koali, which I'll show in a minute. Um, 
The other thing I love, I love that there's a little bit of an overlap of where the gathers attach the yoke. I think that's really, really lovely. Um, the back, well, the front yoke is straight and the back has just this slight dip again, which I just think is really lovely and lovely long ties. So yes, the named Silly, Silly. Next is um, the Pattern Fantastic Varley. This is a great pattern and my sister's made many of these. And for some reason I haven't made it, but I am going to. It's high on my list. Um, I love, love, love this. Even though the sleeves are really voluminous and big, it's actually um, a neat bodice. That yoke, which is sort of the main bodice really, is, um, is quite neat fitting. Anyway, I love it. I love every version of I see of the Varley. Um, my problem with a lot of blouses and loose flowy blouses like that is I, I always imagine that they have to be worn with jeans and pants. Um, and that's not what I like to wear. But I'm just tucking these blouses in. So if it's opened like this, I, I sort of just tie and wear it with a high-waisted skirt and um, or tuck blouses in. Um, so I'm rethinking my whole blouse selection actually. So I mentioned that the Coeli, the Pauline Alice pattern also has pleats on the sleeve. This came out before um, the named pattern design. So this is beautiful. It is such a beautiful design. I love that the back opens, um, well, it closes with um, ties and it's quite a, a deep yoke. So I think that is lovely. The pleating details, not just on the sleeves, it's also at the bottom of the design and it's just got this neat little collar would just look beautiful in a really light fabric i've got a gorgeous um japanese cotton with navy embroidery on it which i think would look lovely in either this or the named pattern silly right i've seen one of these being made, uh, posted in the So April Blouse hashtag. It's the PM Patterns Cleo. And what a gorgeous pattern this is with so many options. Um, let me see if you can see all those collar options. It's beautiful. So many frills, um, a lovely, you know, big collar the big collar with a frill there's a frill there's a short little frill collar all sorts be really really beautiful and i love the shape of that front yoke um really full romantic sleeves it's just lovely and the last indie pattern and um, yet another of the sponsors is of course the mani by tilly and the buttons and I've made um, a couple of these and spoken about them. And those of you who uh, have, um, are aware of the Marnie would have spied this one here as well that I haven't quite finished off. Um, I'm experimenting with linen. Right, now I will be back with some big four patterns. I'm just inserting this little clip here because I nearly forgot about the So How 7 regalia blouse. And the reason I nearly forgot is because I don't have a paper pattern um, of this design because it isn't in print yet. But this regalia blouse is beautiful. And if you haven't seen Running So-and-So, if you haven't seen Judy's version at um, Running So-and-So, I recommend that you do. Judy was a pattern tester for this pattern and I think she's going to be making 
up another version for the challenge too. It's beautiful. I love this blouse and um, I used one particular image for um, in my Instagram feed when I was um, presenting all the sponsors. I love that um, linen version where Peggy's used two different linens. I love those colors together, but there are so many different versions. She's done so many samples of that pattern. It was just um, fantastic. Um, yes, it's, a, it's another yoke blouse, but it's just a little bit different. Um, it is fuller at the top and comes down to a, a slimmer forearm. Um, I love the yoke and I love the fullness in it. Anyway, it's a lovely blouse and I could not um, omit it from this list. Right, I've been rummaging through my extensive pattern collection to look for some big four patterns that might be of interest. First up is the McCall's 7977 with that beautiful generous frill. It reminds me of the Nina Lee. It reminds me of the Nina Lee Bloomsbury um, with that generous frill. The other one, oh well, another one that I love is the Simplicity 8736, a very classic 1940s, 1940s relaunch of a, a classic pattern. How beautiful is that? I love it when that back yoke extends over to the shoulders and then there's beautiful little gathers um, and there's different collar versions. Beautiful classic pattern. Um, now Berta for a little change. This is Berta style 6262. Where are we? There we go. Line drawing. So what I love about that is that the um, the top of the sleeve is a separate pattern piece. So you get this lovely extension from the front yoke and into the sleeve. Um, and that yoke is extends, you know, there's a back yoke that marries up with the sleeve as well. So I love that. Now, a in inverted commas vintage pattern. Now my Probably my favorite era is the 80s. I love, which one is this? Just made it, 1989. You know when I'm, you browse on Etsy and eBay for vintage patterns? I'm always looking in the 80s. Um, love it. So I graduated high school in the, in the 80s. And so it has a special place in my heart. And also, one of my first jobs, um, so straight from school I didn't study uh, straight away. I just worked for a number of years. And one of my first jobs was in a department store called Maya. And um, I was in the fabric and haberdashery section. Um, and I remember all these patterns you know I, I didn't buy a lot when I was there working um, anyway so I love coming across those patterns and remembering all those designs so I picked this one up I don't know when I picked it up but I just loved it and I just made it in I have no pictures of me in this because I made it years years ago but I just love this really rounded, generous yoke um, and just the epic sleeves. It's very, very fabric hungry. And it's not the best make. There are the necklines that touch too high. I'd probably take it down a centimetre when I, when I make it again because I do want to make it again. And the back's um, terrible as far as how the pattern is placed. I don't really care. Um, I love it and I just made that in a viscose fabric that um, 
I had in my stash. So that was from a number of years ago. So if you um, aren't buying any new patterns, make sure you go into your stash and see what you already have. Maybe you've got a dress pattern also that just the bodice section would be a beautiful blouse as well. I know this is the week when everyone gets serious about their entries and there's lots of sewing going on. So I can't wait to see um, your posts to the hashtag over this weekend. Also, I just wanted to give you a little reminder of discount codes that are still um, active. So the I am patterns discount code for 15% off the Hesat and Cinderella um, patterns. I say patterns because there are dress and blouse versions in those patterns. Um, that's valid until May the 1st. And the code is all in caps. I love blouses. So a great discount code and the Friday Pattern Company 20% off the patina blouse is still going until the 30th of April and that code is so April blouse all in caps and the stitched for good stitched for good is the wonderful Australian designer who's sponsoring our challenge. Um, there's a 15% off discount code for the honeysuckle top and the waratah top and the code is the hashtag for this challenge so hashtag so April blouse 23 and that ends April 30. So I think that's it for the the discount codes that are still valid. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I look forward to um, reading your comments. If you like the video, if you could give it a thumbs up, that would be lovely. And if you haven't subscribed, if you could, that would also give me a real boost. Um, yes, I have another one of these sorts of videos. Um, planned. We'll see how I go. I've got a lot of sewing I need to get cracking on with. So um, yes, anyway, I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.